Last week, I went up to Oliver's Hill and had some great contacts on two metres. With just a two element Yaki, contacts were made up to nearly 500 kilometres distance, with the help of some aircraft flying over. However, some stations were borderline. If I had a few more dB, I'm pretty sure I would have been able to work them and had contacts up to six or even 700 kilometres distance. So, a better antenna was needed, yet it still needs to be light enough for me to carry easily. Some ingenious builders use elements thin enough to fit inside the boom. That makes for an antenna easy to package and harder for things to get lost. Unfortunately, that requires some thinner elements and boom, I don't have. So, I'll resort to what's on hand. If you see an old TV antenna, make sure you rescue it because antenna material for two meter antennas is going to be harder to get. That's because digital TV uses the VHF high bands and UHF spectrum only. That means antenna elements a bit too short for two meters. From that pile down there, there's obviously enough to build a Yagi for two meters, maybe even two or three. So I've got to make some decisions. Very roughly, when you double the boom length, you double the gain. A 30 or 40 centimetre boom would be okay for a two element Yagi. That's a spacing of around 0.15 to 0.12 wavelength. That's good for around 4 to 5 dB above a dipole. A boom of just under a metre would be okay for around four elements, or maybe five elements if narrowly spaced. This antenna is a bit of a monster. It's quite wide spaced. I think it was the DL6WU design. It's six elements and works quite well, but it's obviously too unwieldy for portable use. So it's a fine balancing act between performance and portability. I want a boom length of around a metre long, four or five elements, and around eight dB of gain. The boom should be metal and the elements around nine millimetres in diameter to suit what I have on hand. Another thing that's important is the driven element and how you're going to match the feed line to it. Different antennas have different impedances, but all need to be matched to be compatible with the 50 ohms from your transceiver. A driven element for a 2 metre beam is just under a metre long. One way to match it to the feed line is to use a gamma match with a small capacitor to tune out reactances. Another approach is to split the driven element into equal halves. Here I'm using a bit of chopping board as the insulation material. Folded dipoles are also popular. The idea of the folded dipole is it quadruples the feed point impedance. That's important because in a Yagi the more elements you add then the lower the impedance drops and folding a driven element is one way to get it back up to 50 ohms to match the feed line. A variation of a folded dipole is what you could call half a folded dipole. It's popular in antenna designs by Kent Britton. I chose the simplest approach, a directly fed split dipole, although you should add a one-to-one -one ballon to keep the radiation pattern straight and minimise stray currents. Apart from the boom length and the number of elements, there's other important considerations when building a Yagi for two metres. What's the difference between wood and metal with the antenna boom? It can be quite a bit, particularly for VHF and UHF Yagis. A metal boom antenna requires slightly longer elements, particularly if the elements pass through holes in the boom. That difference is called a correction factor, and it may be between 3 and 7 millimetres for a Yagi on 2 metres. Also critical is the thickness of the element. This is from an old TV antenna and is about 8 or 9 millimetres thick, or nearly 3 8 of an inch. Whereas you can build 2 metre antennas with elements as small as 5 or 6 millimetres, or as large as 10 or 15 or even 20 millimetres. The thicker elements tend to be more broadband, but they could be heavy, which could be a disadvantage for portable use. Also, thicker elements need to be cut a little bit shorter than thinner elements. I went through various websites and found that the DL6WU was well known and widely reproduced. There are also the Kent Britain cheap Yagi antennas. Look up WA5 VJB and cheap Yagis. 
I also found material by W5TX. That appealed to me, particularly because his Yagis were 50 ohm. Therefore, they didn't need any special matching section. You could feed the coax straight off the driven element. And it was just a simple split driven element. No folded dipoles, gamma matches, delta matches, or anything like that. Also, he provided dimensions for a wide variety of element and metal thickness combinations, including the thickness of metal that I'm using. It even turned out that the spacing he used was similar to the holes already drilled in this old TV antenna. So, it was clearly the design right for me. I'm lucky I've got plenty of elements, so if I stuff one up, I've got plenty of spares. As for cutting them, I've just got a miter box, a bit of wood and a hacksaw. This is the completed antenna. Well, not really complete, but it is operational. I should really have a ballon here. I could just wind the cable into a few turns and tape it together. It just needs to be one to one. The antenna should be collapsible. I should use some better screws that are more easily able to be undone. And I need a mount for a mast. The original position isn't any good because it's off centre, but somewhere along the boom between the director and the driven element should be okay. I haven't cut any of the elements. The SWR comes up as about 1.1 1 .1 at 144 meg and it does creep higher above 147. So the driven element may be a touch too long. That's part one. Join me in part two where I'll go down the beach and see how it works on air.